Grog 3 just crushed both OpenAI O1 and DeepSeek R1, and it wasn't even close. And after this mind-blowing story, we'll get to how based on interviews from very well-respected experts, AI will achieve superhuman capabilities this year. I know it sounds unbelievable, but watch till the end and you'll see it is happening in 2025. Grok 3 is the long-awaited model from Elon's XAI and is the biggest trained AI model as far as we know. It is 10 times bigger than Grok 2, which was already a pretty decent model. O1 is the latest and most capable model from OpenAI available on ChatGPT Plus and Pro. And DeepSeek R1 is the Chinese model that supposedly reached O1 performance on much, much smaller scale and lower cost. Although in my experience, R1 isn't as good as O1, not even as good as O1 Mini. For example, in my last video, I prompted O1 for a Mario-like 2D game and it created a working game in one shot twice in a row. Then I asked R1 and the result was a black screen. That's okay if the black screen is as a result of a small error, but the entire main file for the R1 code was 28 lines. So I'm pretty sure it's not a small mistake and I tried more than once. There is also this benchmark from AI Explained that shows R1 is not even as good as O1 Preview. Nonetheless, R1 is a pretty impressive model as a low budget model from China and is a very important milestone for the open source community as it revealed much of the technology behind the thinking models. Plus, it is on par with O1 and various other benchmarks. So how did Grok3 crush both O1 and R1? There was a fight between O1 and R1 to settle which one is the best model in the world. When Eric Zelikman, one of the top AI researchers at XAI, entered the arena with Grok3. The challenge was to write a Python script that would animate a bouncing yellow ball inside a square, ensuring proper collision detection with the square rotating slowly, all implemented in Python, while keeping the ball within the square's boundaries. It is a hard task and basically both O1 and R1 failed. As you see, O1 Pro on the left, the ball is stuck in one corner, and DeepSeek R1 on the right, the ball clearly moves out of bounds. People were still debating which one is better until out of nowhere, Eric Zelikman dropped this, no explanation. As you see, it is a clean sweep for Grok3, but he didn't stop there. Someone replied, what happens if you ask for a ball in a tesseract instead of a square? If you don't know what a tesseract is, welcome to the club, but we are about to find out. Here it is. That's a tesseract. Which is like this from another point of view. My brain can't even handle what's going on there, but it seems like it is working. And both of these examples were in one shot. So what exactly makes Grok3 so powerful? Basically, Grok is by far the biggest AI model ever created. XAI has the biggest single cluster of GPUs in the world, with 100,000 H100s. That's 10 to 20 times more compute that was used for GPT-4. And we've discussed before, the best model in the world would be the model that uses the most amount of compute more effectively and more efficiently. Although there is an important variable here that could make this go from very impressive to astonishingly powerful. And that is the fact that we don't know if Grok3 is a thinking model or not. The naming suggests that Grok3 is a continuation of Grok2, which is not a thinking model. And if that's true, it is revolutionary. Let me explain. You've probably seen this chart. It kind of makes sense, but it is misleading, as comparing these models against each other isn't exactly fair. Imagine two chess players playing against each other, but one of them starts with one second on the clock, and the other with one hour. So the first player has to basically make instant decisions, while the other can think through all of his moves. If the player number one lost, is it fair to say the second player was a better chess player? That is what's happening on this chart. In fact, we could argue this is the same player, but has more time to think each time, as the base model for all of these AIs is the same GPT-4. I'm not downplaying the importance of the technology that gives the models more time to think, that was a milestone on its own, but I want to remind us, this is still the same player, and OpenAI built a new layer that goes through all of his thoughts and picks the one that is more promising to pursue. So, if as the name suggests, the new Grok3 is a foundation language model that managed to crush thinking models, it is unbelievably powerful. Although my personal guess is XAI will release two versions, a normal Grok3 foundation model and a thinking version of it. And Eric Zelikman likely used the thinking version to create these amazing outputs, 
Or they release just one Grok 3, but it is a different technology that blurs the line between these two types of models. By the way, we have it on good authority that Grok 3 is ready to go public, and it is likely going through safety tests right now. It is unlikely that XAI doesn't release it before the end of February 2025. If you've made it this far, I'm gonna share a little secret with you. I wanted to make a separate video for this, but it sounds so clickbaity that no one would have clicked on it. In 2025, AI for sure will achieve superhuman capabilities, but we won't get artificial general intelligence. I know we've heard one comes after the other, but they are different. And these are mostly summarized from Demis Asabis of DeepMind and Dario Amadei of Anthropic. If you've paid attention in the past six months, you know this is not even a hot take. I've been in this field for, for 10 years. I've worked at all the major companies, including Google, including OpenAI. Right now, I'm more confident than I have ever been at any previous time um, that we are very close to powerful capabilities. We're going to get to AI systems that are better than almost all humans at almost all tasks. The term I've used for it in an essay I recently wrote is a country of geniuses in a right. data center. So let me explain. Basically, there was this idea of test time compute circling around as far as I can remember, before even ChatGPT was released. Everyone thought it just makes sense that if you manage to effectively use compute, not in training phase, but in inference time, basically allowing the model to quote unquote think more, you'll get better results. But no one expected that it would make such a massive difference. And then the leap from 01 to 03 was so gigantic and happened so fast that it woke up a lot of people. So here is how AI will achieve superhuman intelligence this year. One of these traditional stock fish or deep blue um, uh, systems would maybe look at millions of uh, possible moves for every decision it's going to make. Alpha Zero uh, and Alpha Go made, you know, looked at around ten, tens of thousands of um, possible positions in order to make a decision about what to move next. But a human grandmaster, a human world champion, uh, probably only looks at a few hundreds of moves, even the top ones, in order to make their very uh, good decision about what to play next. So that suggests that Obviously, the brute force systems don't have any real model other than the heuristics about the game. Uh, Alpha Zero has quite a decent uh, uh, model, but the world, but the human, you know, human top human players have a much richer, much more accurate model than of Go or chess. So that allows them to make you know world class decisions on a very small amount of search. So I think there's still there's a sort of trade off there. Like you know, if you improve the models, then I think your search can be more efficient, and therefore you can get further with your search. Our brains are not built for tr doing Monte Carlo tree search, yeah, yeah. right? So therefore, overall, you do a lot less search. I mean, there's no way that you know any human could could do a kind of brute force search over any any kind of significance. Space. But what if we have a machine that has the best of the two worlds, meaning it has a pretty decent word model plus the capability of searching through a significant space? It's the sophistication of the world models that we're building, which then, you know, if you imagine your world model can get you to a certain node in a, in a tree that you're searching, and then you just do a little bit of search around that node, that leaf node, and that gets you to these original places. But obviously, if your model is and your judgment on that model is, is very, very good, then you can pick which leaf nodes you should sort of expand with search much more accurately. We already have the architecture for it. These new thinking models have an intuition machine. That is the foundation large language model that generates thoughts, like GPT-4. And then they have a thinking layer, going through at least tens of thousands of thoughts in seconds. The base model for this thinking technology hasn't been upgraded since two years ago. But this year, we are for sure going to see GPT-5, Grok-3, Cloud-4, Llama-4, and a new foundation model from Google, probably Gemini 3.0. So the upgrade for the intuition submachine is massive, but the thinking layer is receiving upgrades as well. The difference between 01 and 03 was three months. So it is reasonable to assume we not only get 04, but 05 this year. We combine these two exponentials together and we get a machine that far outsmarts any human on this planet. I know this sounds crazy, but losing a chess match to a computer used to sound crazy as well mostly because this searching layer in our brain can't keep up. And if their intuition improves meaningfully with the new foundation models, they will surpass human cognition. But why don't we get AGI this year? Because AI suddenly blew up asymmetrically in some aspects. 
but it lacks critical capabilities in other areas like episodic memory, like probably being affordable enough. We are not even sure if the AI labs can make such a powerful AI public. And there are other things like long-term planning, which is not obvious that is an emergent property of intelligence. What do you think? Will AI outperform humans basically on any cognitive task this year? I think so, yes. But share your thoughts in the comments. My name is Puria and we discuss emerging technologies here. Hope you have a great day.